and bringing that bomber back. Well, there wasn't much choice. We'd have been goners if we'd bailed out over enemy territory. I understand that every member of your crew had been injured. Yeah, enemy flight did a pretty thorough job on us. We'd never have gotten back if it hadn't been for our instruments. Instruments? What do you mean, Bill? Well, fortunately, our navigation instruments weren't damaged. If it hadn't been for the precision of this little gadget, I wouldn't be here to tell the tale. <laughs> what is it? It's a pivot, the heart of an aircraft instrument. The boys at the base got it out of the wrecked plane and fixed it up for me as a souvenir. Well, it certainly was a magic charm for you and the other fellas, too. You know, it's a funny thing. When I found out that this pivot, and millions like it, were made by a firm that makes a very special phonograph needle. My dad carries them here in his record shop in town. I understand that records were a real source of entertainment to the fellows everywhere. <laughs> you bet. Even on long flights, we'd tune in on record programs. Recorded music meant a lot to the servicemen. I suppose you're anxious to get back to work in the record shop. Right. This uniform goes into mothballs, and tomorrow I'll be back at the shop. I've sure been looking forward to it. Are you sure it's just the record shop, Bill? Now that you mention it, there is a certain party. She's been helping Dad take care of business ever since I went away. <laughs> well, seriously, Bill, after all the excitement you've been through, won't the record shop seem just a little quiet? Well, I wouldn't say quiet, exactly. Sometimes there's plenty going on. We'll take this one, Pop. Jitterbugs. Bobby Soxers, Jive, Cutting Rugs. Bah! Make a big sale, Pop? One record, after two hours of sampling. Oh, and they broke one to boot. Oh, no, don't worry, Pop. Someday they'll be good customers. Alice is right, Pop. Those kids are record conscious. They'll buy plenty later on. Maybe you're right, but I sometimes wonder what this record business is coming to. Oh, it still looks great to me. In fact, Everything looks even better than I remember it. Do you really think so, Bill? We tried to do all the things you suggested in your letters. Alice has been a great help, Bill. Without her, I'd have been lost. Oh, Pop. <laughs> Excuse me. Here come some customers. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have a recording of Polonaise? I think so. Just a moment. I'll check. You know, Pop, the prospects for this business are terrific. In fact, I can hardly wait to get started on some of the things I have in mind. What are these doing under here? Well, that's where I've been keeping them. Well, let's put them out here where they can be seen. After all, after records, needles are about the most important item we carry. They should be suggested to every record customer. Will there be anything beside the record? No, thank you. Just a moment, please. Now get your change. 
Did you mention needles, Alice? Why, no, they didn't ask for them. You said to test them. Something like this. How about a good long life needle? Do we need needles, dear? Well, it's been quite a while since we bought any. Well, I guess we do need some of that. Well, what kind do you recommend? Well, this Fidelitone Deluxe needle will give you long life and faithful reproduction. And it's kind of your record. Well, isn't a dollar quite expensive for a needle? Well, it isn't really, because it actually saves you money. Let's figure it out. You get up to 5,000 plays for your dollar. If you used ordinary steel needles, you'd need at least 500 to get that many plays. And that's counting 10 plays for each needle, even though the manufacturers recommend only one or two. Your 500 steel needles would cost a half a cent apiece. And that would come to uh, at least $2.50. So you're saving $1.50 in cash. And you get rid of the bother of changing a needle three or four hundred times. That is a lot of work. Well, what do you mean, uh, up to 5,000 plays? You see, the life of a needle depends upon several important factors. For example, a heavy pickup will wear out a needle faster than a light one. Then, two, inferior quality or badly worn records are hard on needles. But under reasonably normal conditions, you can expect 5,000 plays. Well, I guess we've had the wrong idea about long-life needles. But we'll take one. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I see what you mean about mentioning needles, Bill. You mean uh, you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to remember to mention needles to every customer. That's good salesmanship, and customers appreciate it. Well, you certainly gave that couple the needle. <laughs> oh, Pop, you're getting worse every day. But, Bill, how do you happen to know so much about needles? Remember my telling you about this pivot which was made by Permo Incorporated to make Fidelitone needles? Mm -hmm. Well, while waiting for my train connection in Chicago, I had a chance to go out to visit the Permal plant. Did you see my old friend, Art Olson? I sure did. When I visited Mr. Olson in his office, he told me an interesting story. After he was wounded in World War I, he spent a number of years in various hospitals around Chicago. During those years, listening to phonograph records became one of his favorite pastimes. Changing needles after each record was a pain in the neck. Olson figured there must be some way to make a needle that would play more than just once. Some way of perfecting a needle that would play for a dozen, maybe a hundred, or even a thousand plays. Six long years passed before Art Olson was able to take his place in civilian life again. During those years, jukeboxes began to make their appearance in small numbers. But operators were confronted with a serious problem of needles that wore out quickly. So they devised various contraptions for changing needles on the jukeboxes. Recorded music was steadily becoming more and more popular, and record sales continued to climb. They reached 65 million in 1925, 90 million in 1926, and soared on to 110 million in 1928. And then came 1929. Down went the sale of records to 45 million in 1930. Twenty million in 1931. 8 million in 1932. During this depression period, Permopoint, the first successful long-life needle, became a reality. Its secret was a wear-resistant, precious metal tip. Some operators were naturally skeptical, but the new Permopoint proved itself capable of thousands of plays. At last, the jukebox operator's prayer for a long-life needle had been answered. Every coin phonograph manufacturer used permal points as standard initial equipment. Jukebox appeared in greater numbers all over the country, and the new and improved automatic record changers found their way into thousands of homes, creating a new demand for a long-life needle for home use. To meet this demand, Permo announced the first Fidelitone needle. Since then, more Fidelitone and permal point needles have been sold than all other long-life needles combined thanks to Permo's continued leadership in research, engineering, and production.
typical of this leadership is Permo's Metallurgical Laboratory, established in 1936. This is the only metallurgical laboratory maintained by any needle company and is responsible for the production of the precious metal alloys used for tipping phonograph needles, instrument pivots, and fountain pens. Here, I saw for myself the skill, precision, and scientific research that has gone into every Permo product. I learned about the precious metal alloys used for the tips of Permo's long life needles. These alloys are compounded to some of the world's rarest metals. One of these metals is osmium, a member of the platinum family. It is the heaviest of metals, and normally four to five times more costly than gold. Osmium is found in small quantities mixed with other platinum metals at widely scattered points in the globe. The entire world output of osmium is only about 700 pounds a year. And Permo is one of the world's largest consumers. Osmium is extremely hard and wear resistant. This hardness was demonstrated by taking a lump of osmium alloy and cutting a piece of glass with no effort at all. But hardness alone does not make a good needle tip. It must also be kind to the record surface. So just the right amounts of other metals are necessary to produce the most desirable alloy. This has been achieved in the various alloys known as permametal, which have been developed exclusively by Perma's research technicians. The metals used in this alloy go into a special electrical furnace. It takes more than 4,000 degrees of heat to fuse them. Infinite care must be taken to assure the uniform quality of each batch, for a single melting supplies enough points for a quarter of a million needles. When the alloy is properly melted, it is poured and allowed to cool. Next, the metal is put into a crusher, which breaks it up into smaller pieces. Then the small pieces go through a rotary grinder, which grinds them to tiny pellets. These are carefully screened so that the pellets are just the right size for needle tips. A sample of the batch is tested in the lab to check its hardness and wear resistance. The sample must meet rigid requirements or the entire batch is rejected. This explains why Permo can guarantee uniformity and high quality for every needle they make. After they have passed the laboratory tests, the pellets are ready to be released for production. It's hard to realize that each of these tiny pellets, which you can hardly see, will soon be the tip of a long life needle. When I looked at some through a microscope, I saw what they looked like when compared with a pinhead. Yet, each of these pellets will ultimately be the heart of a permo needle. But before that can happen, another important component part is needed. Various types of special alloy wire must be procured from reliable sources. Then, in their own wire drawing department, the only one maintained by any needle company, the wire is drawn through machines capable of meeting the exact requirements set down for each Permo product. This additional precision step, which resulted from Permo's wartime production of pivots, is just another feature of the quality control in the manufacture of phonograph needles. Now, machines cut the wire into suitable lengths, and the wire shanks are sent on to the welding department. Here I saw how needles are born. For here, I saw how the precious metal tip material is welded permanently onto the shank. First, the shank is put into the welding machine. And then the pellet is carefully centered on the end of the shank and the operator closes the contact. A surge of electrical current and the pellet and the shank are permanently joined together through the magic of welding. After being inspected and approved, this particular needle is ready for the next step in production the grinding. In this department, special machines enable skilled operators to grind the tips under microscopes to just the right point and angle. These machines were designed and built for precision grinding of instrument pivots during the war. In the forming of the tip, a considerable portion of the precious metal is ground away. These grindings are saved by huge vacuum collectors. To reclaim the osmium and other precious metals, a unique refining process separates the metals from the abrasive, thereby conserving costly materials, saving tens of thousands of dollars a year. Different types of needles made by Permo require different production methods. In making the standard Permo Point round needle, a hollow milling operation cuts down the size of the needle shank 
so that it looks like this. Then the needle is swedged, flattened out so that it looks like this. This swedge gives the needle a certain amount of shock absorption, compliance, which protects the needle and the record. All needles, regardless of type, must go through further steps of production before they are ready for use. When seen under a microscope, the sharpness of the ground point can be readily observed. But believe it or not, a finished needle does not have a sharp point. If it did, it would cut away the record. The tip is carefully rounded off and has a radius of three one-thousandths of an inch, which incidentally is the thickness of a human hair. This perfect radius must be applied to each needle by special processes. With this radius machine, points are rounded off to the exact radius required. Next, a thorough polishing is given to each needle in a tumbling machine. To take off all tiny rough edges and burrs, steel shot is placed in a container with the needles. Then, when placed in the machine, the needles and the steel shot tumble around and around for a predetermined period of time until a perfectly smooth, polished surface is obtained. Now, the needles must go through several more steps involving plating to protect the finish, after which they are thoroughly dried under infrared lamps. In another department, machines are turning out the tubes or protective sheaths which form such an important part of Fidelito needles. The finished needle insert goes into the hollow tube and the patented V-groove crimps the insert firmly in the tube. This V-groove prevents loosening of the needle in the pickup by vibration. Throughout the permo plant, I saw many units of specialized equipment needed to produce various types of needles. These machines are designed by permo engineers and built in the company's own machine shop, which is completely equipped to build and maintain the precision production units needed for all the various departments. As a result, Permopoint and Fidelitone needles are true precision products, yet mass produced with efficiency and economy. As the finished needles come off the production line, they're ready for their final inspection. Even though they've been constantly microspected throughout production, they must pass further inspection before they can be approved. And in addition, sample needles from each batch are set aside for special tests in the sound laboratory. In the sound laboratory, I saw how the engineers check the quality of sample needles as they come through from production. One of the tests consists of placing the needle into a specially designed microscopic projector. When a brilliant arc light is turned on, the needle point casts a shadow, magnified three or four hundred times, which is checked against a calibrated chart indicating the exact radius curve required. This needle passes the test. But now it will have to meet other requirements. Next, it is tested for tonal range. Here the needle is placed on a record. And by watching delicate electrical instruments, the sound engineer is able to determine the exact frequency response of every needle tested. This he records to determine if the needle will meet Permo's rigid standard. Next, the needle is given its final test to check its length of life and kindness to records. This is done on a battery of automatic record changers running day and night. Permo engineers maintain that the only way to determine how many plays a needle is good for is by actually playing records. It takes 60 hours to play a thousand records. But these engineers are patient and painstaking. Finally, when the automatic counter shows 1,000 records have been played, the needle goes back to the microscopic projector again and looks like this. Let's see how it compares with a steel needle that has been played only once. Here's the proof. That steel needle shows more wear after one playing then a permo needle shows after 1,000 planes. The answer lies in the smooth, satiny finish of the precious metal tip on all permapoint and fidelitone needles, the result of the constant research and precision detail on the part of permo scientists and engineers. In the packaging department, the finished perfect needles are packed in individual containers, according to type. 
Behind every needle made by Permo stands the history of a company whose name has always meant the best in phonograph needles. Yep, there's a real story of research and precision engineering behind those Fidelito needles. Why, I never realized before how much work goes into making a good needle. It's a wonder they can sell them so reasonably. It certainly is. Would you ring that up for me, Pop? Okay. I wish I could have gone through that plant with... Why, here comes an old friend of yours, Bill. Hello, Hello, Dr. Brother. Stevens. Hello, Dr. Stevens. Bill, well, it's certainly good to see you back in the shop again. Uh, swell to be back. Well, just to see you get started off right on your old job, I've got troubles and bad. <laughs> Can't be as serious as all that, Doc. Well, it is. Just take a look at those two records out of my favorite album. They sure do look bad, don't they? What caused this? Well, that's what I want to know. Was there anything wrong with your needle? You know, I had a suspicion that that might be the trouble. I had no magnifier to examine it, so I, I brought it along. So here's your trouble. Take a look at this. See how it's chipped? You must have dropped the pickup or let it slide across a record. That's it. I do remember dropping the pickup, but not very hard. I didn't think that would damage the needle. It sure did. Lucky it only ruined two records. Well, that burns me up. That was the most expensive needle I could buy. Well, if I needed a doctor, I, I wouldn't go to the most expensive one. I'd go to the best one. <laughs> you mean me. Okay, you be the doctor in this needle case. What's your cure? I'd prescribe this Fidelitone Supreme, by all means. Sure it won't chip? It won't chip. It has an alloy tip of satin smooth finish, and its shock absorption features make it easy on records. Here's something else, too. The patented V-groove on all Fidelitone needles allows the thumb screw to lock the needle in securely. Vibration can't loosen it. This Fidelitone Supreme needle will give you service unequaled by any other make, regardless of price. Well, how much is it? Only two and a half. Oh, well, then I save money. Right. By the way, we don't have these two records in stock, but I'll get them for you. Well, thanks a lot, Bill. Uh, I'll take the uh, needle with me, and you can call me when you get the record. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye, Dr. Stevens. Bye, Dr. Stevens. Mmm, here comes another customer. Busy little place, isn't it? How do you do? May I help you? Why, yes, thank you. Do you have Stardust? I'm sorry, we're out of that number right now. Uh, but we're expecting it in just a few days. Uh, would you like something else? Perhaps some other records? No, I don't believe so. How about a good needle? Well, maybe so. What kind do you recommend? We consider the Fidelitone line the finest needles on the market, regardless of price. The Fidelitone Master has these six outstanding features. Thousands of perfect plays, maximum kindness to records, filters record scratch, permium metal tip, four times more costly than gold, patented floating point construction, allowing freedom of movement either vertically or horizontally. Patented self-locking feature, preventing the needle from loosening in the pickup by vibration. No other needles can claim so many features as this Fidelitone line. And in addition, this Fidelitone Master comes packaged in a handy and useful record brush, which should be used to keep the records free from dust. Would you like to have me demonstrate it? No, thanks. That won't be necessary. Here's my card. Oh, what's this? You're from Permo. Yes, I'm Steve Wayne, mystery shopper from Permo. You've just won yourself a prize for mentioning Fidelitone needles and for being so well informed about them. Why, Bill, Pop, look at this. What's up? Well, he says I've won a prize. What is it? It's a secret, but you'll like it. We're visiting record stores in this area. Permo gives awards to the salespeople who are doing a good job of selling Fidelitone. Well, I'll be. Good for you, Alice. <laughs> We believe that customers appreciate a salesperson who can talk intelligently about the merchandise she sells. Oh, it's easy to sell a product when you know something about it. Exactly. And a salesperson who takes added interest in the things she sells increases her value to her store and to herself. Right. Well, I've got to be running along. Be sure and mail that into the Permo Company, and they'll send you the prize. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. I'll get it. Okay. Gee, Bill, you're the one who should really get the prize. Nothing doing. You earned it. Anyway, it's, it's all in the family, isn't it? Well, if that's the way you really want it. 
Yes, we have. Thank you. Goodbye. Mind if we play this again, Pop? Joe here hasn't heard it. Here we go again. Thank you.